Alexa, play Imagine Dragons. Okay. Cause you're a With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get access to over 50 million songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Blog Talk Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Here we go. All right, all right, all right, guys. Here's the moment that you've been waiting for. Welcome to the show. This is the Judge Shout. Judge, gosh, help me, Jesus. I don't start it messing up already. Let's try this again. This is the Judge Joe Brown Show, hosted by the one and only, the mumbler, Valerie Denise Jones. She's mucking up already before she even gets started, like Nate Brown. Nate Campbell, look at that. I'm not with his name, too. Nate Campbell punched her in the mouth, but that's all right, because the crowd will uh, support me, right? Right, crowd? Right. <laughs> oh. All right, well, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe I should get my act together because maybe this is a show because I do not want to get punched or knocked the ass out. Like, like, like the guy said on, on Friday. All right, y'all. Y'all know what. We turn up on Friday. You know, we're having a good time here today. Uh, I don't know. Did I mess up on purpose or by accident? You tell me. I don't know. But if you are tuned in via the computer, please give us a call at 929-477-1167. Again, that number is 929-477-1167. It's time to have some fun. I am uh, really, really excited about uh, today's show because I've been studying this guy, right, and I am going to share just a little bit about this person because every single fight that I watch, he seems to be very much so in shape, right? But everybody that he fights is, like, out of shape. You know, even the guy who walks out of the ring, he just seems a little unconditioned. (laughs) See if uh, Nate Campbell can help me explain that. But anyway, um, I just want to, uh, yeah, I'm going to share these highlights with you. It's about three minutes long. So sit back, grab your libations and your popcorn. But, you know, don't do like this guy's uh, uh, opponent and get too heavy (laughs) because you won't be able to breathe through this show just like his opponent. Let me shut up. Let me shut up. I get some hate mail threat in the mail. But anyway, here's this guy's uh, history. And you tell me because I watched a couple of his clips and, yeah, all of his opponents are just out of shape. (laughs) I'll be back. Ifa Jagba, born the 22nd of April 1994, is a Nigerian professional boxer. In 2016, he won the gold medal in the super heavyweight event at the African Boxing Olympic Qualification Tournament held in Yeoand. As a professional boxer, he have won all his fights by knockout. Some say he could be the next Deontay Wilder. Like Wilder, a Jagba possesses incredible punching power. He can end the fight with one solid right hand. Please check out Aoife Jagba's knockout highlight. The 30th of July, 2017 Aoife Jagba vs Terrell Herndon. A Jagba won his pro debut after knocking down Herndon twice in the first round. Referee decided to stop the fight after the second knockdown. The 21st of October, 2017 E for Jagba vs Luke Lyons. Ajaba fought fellow undefeated boxer Lyons. Hard left hook to the body and down goes Lyons. Ajaba continued to target the body and put down Lyons again for the second time in the fight. Referee waves off the fight. Another first round stoppage win for E for Jagba.
November 04, 2017 E for Jagba vs Rodney Hernandez. guys let's stop it there because I just realized you probably would have had a better experience had you been watching it versus listening but anyway yeah so um let's get this show started uh I really am really really excited to talk to Nate Campbell today very very excited always excited when this person comes in to my um humble abode and joins me and shares his uh, his insight because he's very, very, very intelligent. Even though throughout his career he was knocked upside the head quite a few times. Now, I got dropped as a baby a couple of times, and people say I'm crazy, so I do not know how he made it. But anyway, let's give him a proper introduction. And a new WBC lightweight champion of the world. All right, all right, all right. It's Mr. Nate Campbell. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Walk on into the building. And, uh, yeah, let, let's get started. Let's get this party started. How y'all Mr. Doing? Campbell. Hey, hey, hey. How are you? I'm good. What's going on? I wish I had your um, your intro versus that guy's intro. Because, like I said, I watched a couple of his fights. I realized that he's kind of new, fresh. But all those guys he fights. Seem to be all, you know, like they they <laughs> eat a one too many donuts. Not necessarily healthy food. Well, what's going on with that? Even that picture I posted, that guy looks a little hef, a little little, little hef, um, healthy. Is, yeah, I, I think you it's know the word I want to use to stay on the same you, you know what? <laughs> regardless of what regardless of what people think about a jagba. Regardless of what they think about him, he came ready to fight. Um, yes. He can at this that point. He only fight. He only fights who they put in front of him. He doesn't pick them. His people pick them. Mm-hmm. Um, the young man that I I came out there with, Curtis Harper, had the experience. Everything was in his favor, as far as I'm concerned. Even though he was he was out of shape, he told me before he he called me up on Monday to leave on Wednesday. Told me he had been training. Come to find out, he hadn't been training. But at that point, I had already given given him my word that I was gonna that I was gonna um, I was gonna work his corner. So now I'm mm-hmm. in. You know, there's a big reason that I came out with Curtis Harper because if you know if Curtis Harper, he made me make a new rule. If I don't train you, I won't go with you. But Curtis Harper is a guy that I made a I made a vow to me and his trainer. We had the same trainer at one time. And um, when Curtis was, first came into the gym, I made a vow that if Curtis Harper ever, ever needed me to dock, I would go help him. I kept my word. That's dead at this right. point. Because at this point, at this point, I've done all I can to help this kid. I, I promoted right. two fights. I, my last fight, I took my last fight. I fought my last fight just so that they would give me the finances to highlight him. Because I, I didn't need to fight again. Everybody knew who I was in the state of Florida. I'm a legend. And I fought my very right. last fight to benefit him. The next right. fight that I prom- I promoted, he won a title, a small title. A friend of mine had a title. He had just started up. So he became the very first guy to fight for that title. And he won it. I paid the, the sanctioning fees. I've always done the best I could for this kid. You know, and for him to do this has nothing to do with a job. But everything that I'm talking about is what he did. You know, right. so no, I don't. He's trying to spin this out to be a public. You know, that him and his his wife are trying to play spin doctor and make this out to be a protest. This is no protest. This is no protest. If you were protesting, right. you could have pro- you could knock this kid out, walk to the middle of the ring, and protest it. Say what you right. have to say on national TV. Right. Now this I want to no share protest. with everybody why you are qualified to stand in the corner and do what you do because we are talking to a professional boxer, one who competed from 2000 to 2014 of those of you, for those of you who do not know. Um, and he held several titles, WBA Super IBS and WBO Lightweight. And those titles he held from 2008 to 2009. 
And then uh, he previously, let's see, da 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 superweight featherweight title in 2005. Your resume is very, very long. I want to make sure I give you all your credit. Junior welterweight <laughs> title in 2009. Now, it says here that you had a total of 50 fights, 37 wins, 26 knockouts, and one draw, one no contest. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah is that about right? 37. Yeah, 37, 11, and 1. One, one no contest. Um, I fought them all. I fought Casamayor. I fought, I fought on Juan Diaz. I fought um, uh, Tim Bradley. I fought Big Ortiz. Um, Danny, Danny Garcia. I fought. I fought them. I, I never backed down. And I took the fight with a lot of those guys on short notice. So you can't tell me that a guy takes a fight on short notice and doesn't short the fight because I did. My argument is simple. Right. Right. You knew what it was when you signed the contract. Right. And him and his yeah. wife are, are trying to spin this another way. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, well, why don't I play the clip for those people who do not know what the heck we're talking about? I'm going to go on and, uh, and, and play the clip of the actual event. Uh, it's only about a one-minute uh, clip. It doesn't say much. Like I said, it's, Better if you would have had a would have would be better if you had a visual, but I don't because you know you're tuned into the radio show. Um, but I'm going to play it and then we come back. We're going to bring Josh Joe Brown on in. And hopefully he knows a little bit about boxing more more than I do, and we can have this conversation because I'm actually going to read some excerpts from an article to you, Nate, and I'll get your explanation as to what they were trying to say because we know the media too loves to spin stuff. <laughs> but I, I am just really I, I want to hear your perspective As to, uh, you know, what, what they put um, Okay I think it was I, I'll get the article Hold on just a second You guys You're tuned in right now To the Judge Joe Brown Show I'm Valerie Denise Jones 929-477-1167 Let's find out what Nate was just talking about It is a heavyweight matchup I'm going to let you know When that man fights F.A. Ajagba Do not blink of his five professional bouts, four of them have been done in the first round. So he likes to bring an end to opponents in quick fashion. And Curtis Harper has walked out of the ring. Wait, what? I cannot believe I've this. never seen this before. He walked out he of walked the ring. He walked out of the ring. He's not fighting this he guy. He walked out of the fighting. ring. I've never seen this before in my life. Wow. Curtis Harper has and walked the fans out here of in the ring. ring. Are, 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 are really upset right now because... Well, it looks to the painting of the picture was right. a portrait of destruction anyway, so he probably saw that same portrait. Curtis Harper is on his way to the dressing room and is walking out of the ring. So I would I've never that seen it. This. They forfeited the match. The end comes at one second of the first round for your winner by disqualification and still undefeated, Efe, the one and only Adjaba. That's an easy money. All right, we got another one and only, and I'm going to give him a proper introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! So, Zarell, let me open up your mic. <laughs> I'm having way too much fun. This is exciting for me. Yeah, and you tell I'm really getting ready into my football mode, because I absolutely love football season. Um, but welcome, Judge Joe Brown, to the show. We got Nate Campbell on the line and several people who have already pressed the number one. So we're going to, uh, you know, get some, some healthy banter between the two of you, and then we're going to open up the lines and see if, what other people are thinking about this uh, this disaster that uh, Nate, Nate Campbell brought to my attention. Well, your guest has a very good boxing record. It would be much better if it weren't for this recent trend of combining so many classes with confusion that that engenders. So, uh, more power to you, brother. That was some good fighting. Thank you, sir. I'm rather personally acquainted with a lot of boxers. Uh, I knew Muhammad Ali. His number one bodyguard for years was a close and personal friend. I've had several hours worth of discussions with Foreman. I remember an animated discussion with Hitman Hearns 
sitting at a Pistons uh, playoff game in Detroit as to whether or not he lost to Sugar Ray Leonard. He had some interesting remarks later on from Sugar Ray Leonard about that. So I've known a number of fighters. I kept up with the sport a bit. So, yeah, you had a pretty good run. I'm glad that you decided to get into political commentary. That's very conscientious of you. I commend you on that. And that, interestingly enough, has become a trend lately with boxers. So many have been dealing with the political aspects of fighting these days that it seems like almost a natural, especially since Ali did it. And before that, Jack Johnson, uh, dealing with uh, the relevance of boxing as a showcase for that thing about black men that the rest of the white world does not like to mention. So (laughs) I'm all with the sport. I know that Facebook even has you down there. Uh, allowing you to do some of that streaming uh, political commentary. They don't they advertise that they do have a component where that is okay. They usually try to discourage it from all the rest of what they do and leave it left over to nonsense and gossip. But I like what you're doing. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So more power to you. That. I I found that was kind of an unusual situation. I can't remember. The only thing I can remember that came even remotely close to when, no, not Durand, it's when Sonny Liston threw in the towel on one of the bouts he had with Ali. I was looking at it live on television when it happened. Uh, then that was 50 plus years ago back in the 1960s early 60s when they did that and they televised those things live so that's the only thing I can think of Liston was hurt but people just didn't get it I don't recall seeing anything where somebody just didn't even start to fight I've seen it where it happens where somebody couldn't make the weight. In fact, I think that's happened once or twice around you, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. But just getting up and walking out of there with no explanation. I've never seen that before. Well, I want to read an article to both of you and, and get uh, get your opinion as to, to what uh, BoxingScene.com meant uh, because they said that uh, help me with his name. Ajagba? Ajagba? Yeah, uh, Is that his F- name? F.A. F- F- Ajagba. Ajagba. F.A. Ajagba. Okay. They, he said that Harper was scared and asked me to go easy on him. Heavyweight prosper, prospect, F.A. Ajagba, 6 and 0, 5 KOs. Noticed something was strange when he came face to face with opponent Curtis Harper last Thursday at the weigh in. Um, he was figured he was scared. He walked towards me and said he had watched all of my fight and that he needed me to take it easy on him. Well, why would I take it easy? This is my life. And then he said, but then when he came face to face, um, when they came face to face to each other on Friday night at the Armory in, in Minneapolis, the fight never happened. Harper reportedly unhappy over his purse. Now, this is this is what I want to ask you about, because it says that Harper was unhappy over his purse, walked out of the ring when the first bell sounded. He was disqualified, the purse was withheld, and he could be suspended by the local commission. When Harper walked out of the ring and began walking to the back, Ajaba thought it was a joke. I started walking towards him and saw him stepping through the ropes. I was shocked and surprised at first, thinking maybe it was a joke. Seeing Harper walk outside the arena and down the runway, I asked Ronnie Shields what happened. Where is he going? I heard someone say he ain't coming back. He's not fighting. According to Ajaba, four other opponents had withdrawn from the contest after Harper finally accepted. Four other opponents had pulled out because they didn't want to fight me. So Harper was the fifth. 
but he signed the contract, and when you sign the contract, you're getting paid a certain amount to fight, and you're supposed to fight. Instead, he gets into the ring, and then he walks out of the ring, as Jabra said. And then it just talks about, you know, he's been trained by Ronnie Shields and promoted by Richard Schaefer of Ring Star Sports. So that's the end of the article. So you gave a different perspective. Uh, what, what do you say um, of, of this article saying that he was upset because of the purse? Well, that's, well, that's, what, that's what Curtis Harper's telling people. He's telling people that. But that's not the issue because he knew he was getting paid when he walked in the arena. It's not like he showed right. up and all of a sudden they made a deal with him. He signed this contract before he even got on the plane. So right. my argument is my argument is simple. And and if 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 I'm wrong, correct me. It's not like he's telling everybody that Richard Schaefer was taking money out of his purse. Richard Schaefer wasn't even at the fight. I mean right. the contract is between the, con- the contract was going to be upheld by the by the commission. The commission's job is to make sure that the fighter gets what they're deemed to, deemed on that contract. Simple. I don't have to I don't have to debate, discuss any of that because the commission's job is to make sure that that fighter, those fighters get paid what they what they they sign the contract to get. That's the easy work. So for him to come on now and say, well. They were going to take this amount of money from me. He had a contract. His contract is the one they go by. And all he had to do was protest. And if there was an issue, he could have said something to me. But I didn't make the fight. So all I did was all, he called me on Monday to come help him in the corner. You know. Right. And I'm like, okay, that's not a problem. I'll do that for you. I wouldn't do it for anybody else for the most part, but I'll do it for you. You know, that's very well, good. Well, yeah. I, I, it's kind of late when you wait till the last moment to show up like that. There's all kinds of consequential damages. The advertisers, commercial sponsors have suffered detrimental harm. They relied to the detriment on the representations that the fight was going to go on. It's one thing if somebody gets knocked out, that's understood. If somebody just backs out because of the last moment contract dispute when he's walking in the ring, that's crazy because they can sue him for that. Well, I, 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 so did you think did he get suspended? All, everybody's damages. Well, so here's what the thing. Did, was um, his excuse? The money? That was that's yeah. He was he, he's trying to make it about the money, but here's what I'm gonna tell you happened. Curtis Harper and his wife had already had a plan to do this oh. because there was no there was no need for him to bring her to that fight, none whatsoever. Me and her were arguing and d- debating about the way she was talking to him, trying to look, let this man fight. The one thing that a fighter has, one time in a fighter's life, when a fighter, when it's all about that fighter, is when that fighter's getting ready to fight. Of any other, he can, it's about his wife and kids any other time. But right now, at this moment, I had to explain, her, I really don't want to hear you talking. Oh, you're sexist. Call me what you want. I, you, I said, call me what you want, ma'am. But right now, I don't want to, all I want to hear, I, 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 here's what I did. I took my index finger and my, 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 my thumb. I said, I said, um, right now you're doing this. I was taking my finger going up and down. I said, right, what I really want to see you do is this. Because right now I have a fighter that's a head case that I got to get to this fight. I know he's a head case. I've dealt with him before. And through it all, she's still talking. I'm like, you still don't get it. This is not about you. But she had a plan to make boxing look bad. Well, that, that sounds was, like what it is, and it's absolute stupidity because it's breach of contract, detrimental reliance. They could, she and her husband can get personally hit for every dime everybody claims they lost in anticipatory damages. His opponent my, is sitting there talking about all that he could have made had the fight gone on, and he had a good chance, probably would have won. Uh, so it's all of what came out. How much, you know, when you spend commercial time, usually the idea is one-tenth of what you anticipate mating. So just 
multiply all of what the people put up for commercial sponsorships on that and multiply it by 10, and you start talking about the da- damages that he's liable for. And as to whether or not he can bankrupt that hell, he may never be, might not ever be able to do that. So he's got himself in a stupid position where he's got tens of millions of dollars worth of liability he's looking at for his son. And her dumb behind is going to get caught right up <laughs> to her husband. They'll both be broke. And since she participated in it as an advisor, they can sweep her up in there, too. But you know I what? Mean, just, just, all, look here. All I want to tell you is this. This is why I watch Joe, Judge, Judge, Judge Joe Brown show every day. I wish you would be here to be my lawyer because I really I'm looking for I'm looking for a lawyer to sue this kid. It isn't about the money. It's about the fact, dude. I'm fielding this question over and over. What did, did I know this? Wait a minute, man. Anybody who knows me know I don't do this kind of stuff. I, I can't. I, I can't recall. I'm seventy some years old. My old man used to be a boxing fanatic. Hell, he taught me how to box. I used to do it as an amateur years ago myself. I've been watching boxing matches for that I can remember. I can remember when I was four or five watching, so that's 67 uh, years ago, 66 years ago. So I've been right. looking at boxing. I don't recall reading about or hearing anything like this. Ever I mean, in life. something like that. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. See, I mean, maybe he got he could he would have done better than just said he hell he got scared or he was nervous or something. Uh, well, then that's going in the other that, guy he didn't saying, like the contract. Is, that's too damn late. Then you put all these people in the position of relying on. It. Yeah. And if that was if she wanted to make a negative statement about boxing. Hell, everybody knows if you're somebody coming in and you got a long shot at a fighter that you know ordinarily you wouldn't get a chance to fight, you take it because your next fight's going to be the big money fight, not that one. Thank you. You got to pound your way into a position. I, I, I just, I'm at a place in my life right now where I just don't, I, I can't, I can't understand this. One. I cannot. Yes. Oh, okay, so do you guys? Do you guys are is. you guys going to ignore the fact that Effie said that he was just straight up scared? Like he, he I, I was scared. Oh, hell with and, that. Oh, oh, if he want to be, a, if he wants to <laughs> punk out, that's a whole different thing. Right. But since time immemorial, everybody's got fear, but being a man means you overcome it. You get in there. There you go. See, that's that there feminist nonsense where you talking about. I was scared. <laughs> Well, see, the reason boxing's gotten under traction is every man who used to stand up to a bully knows what it is to, oh, hell, I'm going to have to take this swing, you know, and get it it on whether I win, lose, or draw. You know, you got to twist that up. And, you know, every grown man out there in society who's done that, let alone all these little sissified Punks whose mamas, the school teachers, and the police protect their little punk asses from a fight when they're in the third grade. I, I don't count these little sorry excuses for whatever the hell they are. Uh, every grown man knows what that is, and nobody punks out like that. Hell, it's a fight. It's a different thing, to see, when you are putting on these gloves and there are rules and you've got some protocols you got to follow. You get scared one kind of way, but that's more or less, am I going to perform? Am I going to mess up? There you or go. am I to, more afraid of what you're going to do as a mistake than you are of the fight? There you go. Come on. You ain't lying. Let me tell you something. Sure, but you not- want to punk out and say, I was scared. You got to have little sissified pink frilly panties for draws that you wear <laughs> on a regular basis. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I, I totally agree because I don't believe Effie would have lied and, and said, you know, put out this report that he asked him to go easy on him. I think that he probably did. Say behind but I'm going to say, but, but I'm going to say, Valerie, I'm going to say, yes. Let, let me tell you something. <laughs> See, um, um, courage is not the absence of fear. It is not the absence of fear at all. You're going to be, I, listen. It's not that I was I was fearless when I thought. I just understood that this is what I was doing. I had to do it. 
and this is what it was going to be. And our problem is now we make so many excuses for these cats that nobody holds them accountable. Oh, my gracious. This kid, he is not about the money because I was – he was already trying to short me on the money. And right. even, if, even, even if, even if what we're talking about is me, um, is me, um, coming out there and getting everything I was supposed to get, the most I was going to get was $600. But I did it because I'm like, kid, this is, I told him, I said, this is the one that could change your life. This is the one that could change right. this right here. This win right here shuts up all your detractors. And, you know, that's why I'm, I'm looking at it like that. This is the one that changes. Look, this changes the game. All right. Yeah, you're but right, I, I want to right. ask you, I saw, I saw the picture. He did not look in shape. He looked like he would have been the type to run out of the ring. This guy looks like Wait a minute. freaking – like like some RoboCop compared to him. I mean, he was just I'm say this. he's more rotund I'm say this. and soft and fluffy. Right, and the other right. guy but is Timothy all is muscular up. and tight. And That's no excuse. Thank you, Mike no Tyson. Excuse. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson looked like a killer tonight. He fought Buster Douglas. But who won? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. It now. looks at Ali against Hi. the bear. Well, I'll leave with a 196 lean kid fighting Sonny Liston. 235 pounds, 240. Or even look at at, uh, Floyd Patterson conked out, but he got in the ring with Liston. He's scared to death, but he got in there. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and, and I I, I say this, I mean this. I I mean this without a – stop making this. This kid and his wife had a game plan set up to do what they did. And what they were what they were doing was to make whatever do whatever they were, they thought that this this was gonna turn out to be some kind of situation where they get all these these interviews that they were getting paid for because they were telling people they had paid interviews and you you come on man they don't understand that this is a warrior sport we we don't we don't just like um, snitches in the in the game if you're gonna do something like that you gotta pay the price because nobody nobody. Nobody's down with a person that tells. You know, right, nobody. right. If, if you do the crime, be a man, do the time. My daddy told me this a long time ago. He said, the one thing you will never be is a co-defendant. Right. If you did it, you did it. So if you, my, my, my question is, did he get suspended or no? You, you know what? Here's the thing about it. Everybody's misconstruing if he's suspended or not with the fact that it ain't. It ain't just about him being suspended. This, this, this boy is gonna make sure when they do suspend him that it sticks. They're yeah. Making see, sure look. That... So that he'll never fight see, again. Is that what you're saying? See, see look at Not this. El- look at ever this. in life. See how, how this game works is the promoter gets all these sponsors together. They put their money up. They fight to get the first few minutes because they know there might be a Tyson situation where the knockouts coming very quickly so a whole lot of you know exposure isn't isn't gained but people have to work hard to put these financial promotion packages together get everything set up to go do it so now all of these people that put up this big money lost all that money because this fool went and pulled that off now if his wife was trying to make a statement about the fight game it was the wrong way to do it the wrong oh. way to do it. Right. See, uh, first off, she was relying on this thing I've been seeing where they have been trying to emasculate the fight game. But the problem with that is, is they've got this cage fighting that is developed recently that, you know, is less regulated than boxing is to a great extent. And they've even got women in it where they don't need to be. But, you know, it, it's an interesting kind of transference thing. So I understand. I, I get it exactly what she's trying to do. But it was a zero-sum game. It didn't work. It's dumbass. And she was stupid. He was stupid. And they pulled off a stunt. Right. It would have right. been a whole lot better for him to have gotten in there, trained his ass off, gotten a chance to at least look good against his opponent 
because that opponent was in good shape. He was a dangerous looking opponent. But yes, that's he part was. of the fight game. <laughs> right, exactly. No, but see, it, it's like, see, part of this whole thing about what's so interesting about a fight game is sometimes, you know, they had Russell Crowe play the part, but they did have somebody known as the Cinderella Man. See, sometimes you don't have to look like a gorilla to be able to fight. <laughs> right. All right, so what I want to do right no. now is we got a lot of people on the line, and I want to, again, revisit this whole thing. Like I said, it's about a minute long. And when we come back, we're going to open up the lines, and then I will allow you guys to ask, um, you know, the two on the phone today, um, Boxer Nate Campbell and also Judge Joe Brown, a question or chime in and give your opinion or suggestion as to, to what happened. So I will um, right now just play this clip and see you guys on the other side of the break. It is a heavyweight matchup. I'm going to let you know when that man fights F.A. Ajagba, do not blink. Of his five professional bouts, four of them have been done in the first round. So he likes to bring an end to opponents in quick fashion. And Curtis Harper has walked out of the ring. Wait, what? I cannot believe I've never seen this before. He walked out, he of, the walked out of the ring. He's not fighting this he guy. He walked out of the fighting. ring. I've never seen this before in my life. Wow. Curtis Harper has and walked the fans out here of in the Minnesota ring. Are, 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 are really upset right now because... Well, it looks to the pain of the picture was right. a portrait of destruction anyway, so he probably saw that same portrait. Curtis Harper is on his way to the dressing room and is walking out of the ring. So I I've take never that seen this. They forfeited the match. And comes at one second of the first round for your winner by disqualification and still undefeated, Efe, the one and only. <laughs> All right, guys, you're listening to the Judge Joe Brown Show. I'm Valerie Denise Jones. If you're tuned in via the computer, please give us a call at 929 477 1167. Again, that number is 929 477 1167. All right, so like I said, we are going to now open up the line, and I'm going to start with uh, someone who's been part of the family for a very long time. Welcome to Great to the Show. Hello, come on in and. Uh, do you have a question or comment? I'm getting some feedback from either Judge Joe Brown or Nate. I'm not necessarily sure. But, uh, yeah, um, if you guys could figure out how to adjust your phone, that would be great because it's giving a very, very loud sound. Like we're getting knocked out <laughs> by the one and only Nate Campbell. Uh, so, Philo, do you have a, a question or comment? Well, you know, I've been listening, and uh, shouts out to the panel first off, Nate, Judge Joe Brown, and yourself. I've been listening, uh, and from my research, they said it was over his purse, and according to Nate, always having the great inside information when it comes to boxing, that that wasn't the case. It was something else. Uh, but this is unheard of, man. This was like somebody telling you they're going to beat you up at the school, and you run home. You know what I'm saying? And you the one I've been talking all the, all, all the stuff. So, you know, I, it, 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 this is shocking uh, that somebody is in this profession professionally. Uh, there's other boxers who train their life uh, a way to ever get a chance to step in the ring uh, for a purse. And so this guy had the opportunity to step in the ring for a purse. Not only that, he had some influential people behind him like Nate, like other people who took time out their life to help this gentleman, for him to show up to a fight and just walk out the ring and just quit. And and that's, that's I guess you can look at it as like a cowardice act, so to say. Um, and, and you know, it goes back to what Judge Joe Brown been preaching on manhood. Um, I, when, when, when will you ever think you'll see in this profession, which is known to be a man's profession, so to say, uh, the, 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 the cream of the crop, uh, with boxing, it's a, such a physical sport um, that this guy just, you know, first of all, say take it easy on, which was cowardice in itself, and then to just walk out the ring. Uh, so, you know, uh, this is the time we live in, there, man, and people need to just pay attention to these acts because it's serious out here. It's just real serious so, out here. But um, 
Go ahead. See, well, I want to ask you something because uh, you know they're introducing, and I, I'm doing this on purpose because I love to see when Judge Joe Brown goes in and, and, and Nate too. Uh, you know that there is an, a, an agenda feminized sport because they're introducing male cheerleaders to the to to football. You know, so maybe this guy was paid off behind the scenes, right? Or maybe who's hey, well, so social wait, wait, media. Wait, 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 and don't don't wait, a wait a minute, wait a minute. That's wait a minute, a wait a minute. To every male cheerleader that's been out there for a college team for the last hundred years. Those are just right. sissified little punk that would love to be on Brew Paul's whatever drag race it is out there dancing around. They're not cheerleaders. See, there's a difference. They went and took something else. They took some little sissies and they made them up so that they would be doing the equivalent of those girls getting out there and just doing pole dances. And they don't even allow that for the girls, which is so disgusting. Those are not cheerleaders. They're just Wait a minute. This is bad. Eyelash wearing, uh, makeup wearing, earring wearing little punks. And that's I'm gonna what say you this. got out there on that field. That is not male cheerleading. And I'm gonna say this, okay. Valerie. You keep saying I, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna do. I, I, I find I'm, I'm, I'm angered by people bringing up saying that he got paid under the table. Let me explain something to you. In all my years of boxing, okay. in all of my years of boxing, as an amateur and a pro, I've only had one guy tell me, and I've never, I would, I would never tell you who it is. Mm-hmm. Say they got paid under the table to throw a fight. But if they were going to throw the fight, they would have to throw the fight by getting hit. Because it looks so much better on the end for you getting knocked out than walking out. You understand me? Correct. Right. This was some cockamamie scheme. Curtis Harper, there's, there's a picture that I, I think I did. I sent you the picture of his wife. There's a picture that somebody froze and blew up of Curtis Harper walking out the ring. And my face is total shock and horror. And amazing. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that and, and posted it. Yes, I, I did it. So that's what well, I'm what asking. You know, if it's not well, as minute, it's part of the agenda, then is it social media? And people do the craziest things nowadays to go viral. Right, right. But but here's the thing about it. He thought he was going to be held as a hero. His, I, you got to realize that when I was when I was looking at him walk away, out of my peripheral view, I saw his wife. Her face had a had a smirk on it. And there's one thing you you got to realize about that picture, Val. Have you really looked at that picture? I looked at it as much as I could. It was kind of distorted when you you sent it to me, right. and I looked it up, and I couldn't couldn't find it online. But I did look at it on my phone. Yes. Okay. Well, look at it on your phone again, and look. There's only one person that the whole picture is shocked. It ain't Curtis. Right, and that's you. It, right. It it, it ain't yeah. his wife who is. Who is, has a smirk on her face and still still recording him walk out of the ring? It's me. Only person right. in the whole in that whole in, only two people in the whole building knew that was going down was them two. You so know did what he you were looking to reach at? out to you after that? Hold on one second. No, we didn't you know what you were looking at. This is what you're looking at. See, his wife and he got to believe in that bull they put out on the media about people's public, you know, about public opinion. It is not true. They're propagandizing their little sissified position and they're telling people that everybody's accepting it when they're not. So they counted on people going for that nonsense. Oh, we're stopping this blood sport. You know, it's not enough money. See, that's what's going through their head. I bet that. And that's what's Even if it was co- in behind Judge Brown, that Judge smirk Brown. that woman's got. Thank you. Even if it was, See, but even not, if even, people don't feel that, and when they look at it, it's like, oh man, you got to be lying to me. What's going on here? And they're smirking, thinking that what they've been looking at on CNN at all is real. It isn't. It ain't for them. What she got to realize it would be different if he was a he was a prime. He was a thirteen and five fighter with a he had been knocked out. He had his last two. He was two and. One and two of his last three fights had been knocked out in one round. And the only win he had was against a guy who was an opponent. And they, that guy gave him fits. It's not like he was a name wow. to be. Dude, why should they pay him? He don't get it. He don't get it. He, does, he, he just don't he get it. And it, it. there. 
he wasn't right. in a position to make that kind of statement. And anybody who was a real fighter wouldn't be trying to betray that sport anyway. Right, right. Still did. See, they thought deep. they were doing something. Do you have anything else to say before I go to the next caller? No, I'm good. Val, okay. Um, and then the bad yes, part sir. about it, Val, he yeah. walked around, him and his wife walked around the arena 25 or 30 minutes after the fight like he had lost yeah. a close decision. <laughs> I, 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 I read somewhere where it looked like he was coming back to the ring. Like, you know, maybe he made a mistake and he was trying to walk back and then he changed his mind and then left. Let me tell you something. That wow. boy, that boy There's so many conflicting stories out there. That boy walked around that arena like he had lost a close decision. He was proud right. of what he did. And wow. I looked at him when he did it. I said, you do know that this is the end of your career. Oh, I, I, my career. I was in the ring when the bell rang. I, I said, bro. He would, he began to argue with me and the commission about his pay. I said, "Dude, right. you got to put forth the effort." Wow! Wow! If, if, here's the All thing: right. if the contract was bad, if there was a problem with the contract financially, and you you figured felt that, felt that there was an issue, why didn't you walk in that night, the night we got in, or at the weigh-in, right. and walk up to the commission table and say, "My contract ain't right." Right. How we get it? All right, let's let's bring and in a few more people then. To let's it out. Talk. You know, he knew when he got on the it, plane, he it, wasn't gonna fight. He's saying, "I mess up this pretty face." Nine one six eight three one nine one six. I don't know, Nate. I was just, I don't know. Nine one six eight two one nine one six eight two one. You live, Michael Gay. I'm coming to you next. Nine one six eight two one. Hello? All right. All right. Yes. So we got a... Yes, sir. Hi, you, you're live. We can hear you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, You know, I agree that uh, they was in cahoots because even before he went on, he was, like, in character, you know, by his antics. Yeah. You know, and the then... I, I saw right, that. right, right. Like, they was in cahoots. And then... Uh, it, it's Sir, almost what's your name so we reminiscent. Can, we can ad- what's your name so we can address uh, Yusuf. you properly? Yusuf. Okay, Yusuf. hi, hi, Yusuf. Okay, I'm sorry for interrupting. Hey, hey. I just want to be able to address you properly. Okay. Yeah, and it, it's almost likened to Oliver McCall and Lennox Lewis when Oliver McCall had a breakdown before the fight, if you can yeah, recall but that. McCall, but Yusuf I, you, Yusuf, I know Oliver McCall and Lennox personally, friends with both of them. I'm talking about tight with him. Oliver really had a breakdown. Oliver really should have right, been. Right, 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 right. I mean, I'm not disagreeing with that. I mean, it's just reminiscent of yeah, but, something but Oliver, that was like that that just, yeah, he had right. a breakdown. But Correct. That, Correct. But, but Correct. even then, Oliver Oliver wasn't walking. Oliver, they had to come get Oliver out the ring. Even he, Oliver, they had to come get Oliver out the ring. This boy here, he left that ring. He left the ring like his, like his pants had um, jockeys on. <laughs> he, right. Y'all don't get it. When he left the ring, using, using, you know, do you know what he said? Do you know what he said coming down the steps when that bell rung? What? I can't make it up. This up. He said, "I'm out of here." His exact word was, "I'm out of here." His exact <laughs> word to me. And when he said it, I, my mouth fell open. I was yeah, with my mouth I saw open. him the picture. Dude, I said, when he said it, I said, maybe he got to use the bathroom. I started trying to rationalize when he was leaving. I said, maybe he got his phone unlocked and his wife got it, and she's going through it. Wow. I began to rationalize. I said, oh, my God. I said, oh, no. I said, oh. I didn't. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Welcome, Michael Gay, to the show, 678-698. 678-698. You're live. Hey, uh, you know, I had to chime in knowing this is going to be the topic. Mr. Campbell, I think you are definitely on point because there's certain things I kind of wondered of where, you know, if you're going to forfeit something, you don't show up. This gentleman walked out into the ring, was given the introduction, and then walked off. Okay. So I'm looking at 
you know, I'm kind of wondering, and maybe you can tell us and, and look it up, what was his ranking in the heavyweight division? Because I'm looking at where Anthony Joshua is 20-0. and 0, Deontay Wilder is 30-0. and 0, uh, Joseph Parker is 24-0. and 0, uh, Louis King Kong Ortiz is 28-0. and 0. Alexander, uh, what is it? And okay. I think you probably know who he is. Yeah, he's 31-0. Uh, Cubit, uh, Pelvev, uh, 25, excuse background noise, and one. You know what I'm saying? That what was his ranking, you know, in his boxing career for him to go into the ring thinking that he could be a champion because all these guys are way ahead of him in their record. Can you share that with us? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, you're live. He said he only won 13 fights. Yeah, Nate, we can hear you. But here's you. the thing. But here's, here's what y'all got to remember. It only takes one fight to change your lot in life. Right. If you do it right, the right fight. Jamil McClain won one fight. He beat. He, he came out and he beat um he beat Michael Grant, I think, by knockout, and he became a player in the division. See, the problem is this day and age, you guys are so worried. You guys are so. So caught up in the oh, the, the the small amount of losses. I, when I won the world title, I think I had five losses. You know what I'm saying? I had five losses. What I'm trying to say is, Curtis Harper could have made he could have made some noise with that win and ended up getting a, a more. If he'd have beat this kid, they'd have put him in another fight that would have been more significant. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but Nate, when I'm, lost, you, lost, when, lost, you, lost, when I'm asking you, Nate, but when I'm asking you, Nate, but when I'm asking Nate, what? But what I want to ask Nate is this. What I'm trying to ask Nate is this. Is that where this is the heavyweight division, right? Right. Okay. I just named off a bunch of folks. I don't know what rank this individual who came out on the, the on, on onto the damn canvas, that's what it is, uh, you know, and, and, and going into introductions and walk out the ring and walk all the way back to the dressing room. Would, what I'm no asking you is this. Is that where what rank was he? At this point, because I just read off the ranks of all the other individuals, because he has to work his way up, right? So, what right, rank was he? And I get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I get what you're saying. You're talking about okay. a ranking. Nobody's talking about rankings because a job was only five and zero. Oh. Actually, Curtis, Curtis Harper was brought in to lose. He was brought in okay. to be an opponent. He was brought in to be that guy. You know, he was brought in to be that guy that 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 to bring him down. made a job okay. look good. But he could have, mm-hmm. he could have, dude. My whole, you know, my, the name of my um, my autobiography I'm working on is called um, um, Nate Campbell Experience the Galaxy: My Life on the B Side. I came on the B Side. Zab Judah's daddy loves me because I made my bones on the B Side. Curtis Harper came. Can you on explain? The can you explain what B Side means for those of us who don't? You know. come in to lose. Okay. They bring you in to lose. So well, what I'm gathering from from all things treated equal, it really stats don't really matter anymore. We got a president who had no experience, who was a reality well, show. Is, uh, the problem is the person, problem is so does it many, even too many matter people anymore? that watch boxing now. Too many people watch boxing. I get caught up in the that 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 old thing, that fifty and oak type thing that Mayweather did. I was I was taught that a fighter you ain't a real fighter unless you you ain't never fought. I said. You've never fought anybody if you don't have a loss by the time you win the title. Oh well, no, no. Well, the thing is, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, sir, is all I'm saying is that where, based on boxing rankings, and you know that exists, uh, you know, and and I said that you know this is a heavyweight boxer, right? And so right. he goes into the ring, which we already know. He punks out. He walks away. You know, he, he walks down the stage. You know, but I'm saying that where I'm looking at a lot of Let's Call it what it was. <laughs> okay, okay, ran down the street. Well, I won't say he ran. He he was in a fast pace, okay? No, it wasn't like well, he strolled. Okay, I he okay, okay. I saw, I saw the video. But the whole thing is that I'm, I'm saying that where I'm kind of <laughs> curious. I'm kind of curious what was – see, I never knew his ranking. Does Can anybody figure out what his ranking was? Because I ran down these individuals who have a you, ranking about, of, you know, 20 and 0 and 39 and 0. Mike. His, but you, right, his ranking. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're asking a question that really doesn't matter in this fight. A job right. was not ranked. There's no need for okay. a ranking. There's no. Neither one of these guys are ranked. 
But in order for one okay. of them to get See, right, I didn't catch Thank guy. you. Right. None of them I, I were ranked. I got it. Exactly. I got it. I got it. All right. I didn't do what you were saying. Right. I, see, right. I, I thought that, I, that I, I thought that they were ranked boxers. Okay, so you no, you no, you no, you no, no. Yeah, you yes, my question. A Jogba is a prospect. Um, um, a Jogba is a, a prospect that eventually they want to make a contender. They want to make a champion. That's how you go. You go you you go from to to to, to, go, to go the right way. You go from being a prospect to a contender to a contender to a to, right. a, to, but, to a rank. But, right. right. Exactly. Right. Okay. Now you've but made it clear. Curtis Harper. Curtis Harper is the only other side of that. There's another side of that coin. Mm-hmm. There is, there is a guy that comes out. He goes from prospect to to um to, um to opponent to journeyman. Okay. That so so basically, so so basically, Nate, well, what I'm hearing you say is that by by the other guy being a the prospect, they brought Curtis in. To, to to get this guy a a next level opponent, to right? Fight. And right. Curtis, y'all, y'all got some Curtis Hall and work out. Curtis, year, two years ago. Curtis messed that off because he got scared and ran out the ring and then blamed it on his money not being good because dude was gonna get in his ass. Right. Okay. Can, can let I? Me, let me you guys. Right. <laughs> Chris, 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 Nate, Chris, Nate, Nate, when you're done, I'm I'm gonna read an article from. News to give you a whole nother perspective that's out there. All right, all right. Let me help you understand something. Chris Ariola fought Curtis Harper, Curtis, but he fought Curtis Harper right after losing the world title. Curtis Harper put on a fight of a lifetime, got knocked down the first round, got up, and got in Chris Ariola's dooley rag. So I'm talking about, dude, I thought he won the fight. Both, both Chris Ariola knows Chris Ariola was a serious contender, fought for the title twice. But here's what you gotta understand: that Curtis Harper ain't the Curtis Harper that showed up last Friday. Right. And let me let me read what SportingNews.com reported. It says uh, the the story behind why Curtis Harper walked out of the ring. That's the title. So it says Curtis Harper labored in obscurity for most of his eight year career, professional boxer. But by now, most boxing fans have seen the video of Harper walking out of the ring seconds after the bell rang for the start of his August 24th fight against F.A. Ajaba at the Minneapolis Armory. More than one million viewers watched Harper on the YouTube on YouTube during the past five days. Google Curtis, Curtis Harper and 650,000 results will appear on your screen. His exit from the ring was reported by most major news organizations and featured on CNN's homepage. The commentary has been overwhelmingly de- de- derisive and centers on the demeaning storyline that Harper was terrified of his opponent. But there are issues that go beyond the standard event coverage. Sporting News has learned that Harper has been plagued by serious eye problems. Some medical experts, including doctors at the New York State Athletic Commission, has said that he shouldn't be in a boxing ring at all. He's 30 years old, 250-pound journeyman, heavyweight from Jacksonville, Florida. His ring stands, his record, Michael, um, stands at 13-6 with nine knockouts and three defeats by knockout. He has won one fight over the past four years, a third-round knockout to Andrew Greeley. To put that victory in perspective, In 30 fights since April 2008, Greeley has emerged victorious one time. And then let me just read this last part. It says here, the high point of Harper's career came back on March 2015 when he went eight hard rounds against Chris Ariola. Um, It says, uh, da 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 into the ring at a blubbery 262 pounds. Harper weighed 260 pounds. The assumption was that Curtis would get knocked out early, and the assumption was bolstered in round one when he was decked out by a right hand and rose on wobbly legs looking like 265 pounds of jello. But Ariola was was woefully out of shape, and Harper evinced the mindset, if not the skills of a professional fighter, devolved two huge guys staggering back and forth and what resembled a barroom brawl instead of a 
pop, crash, pow, seventh round. And that's what I'm saying. Like, these, this, all these guys look out of shape. It's just amazing and an insult. So why I know would the you boxing like, hey, you're all, you're, you're, you're in shape. This other guy's in shape. But now they're saying it's because of eye problems. And he shouldn't be Right, so why would the Boston Council allow that? But when I'm, what I'm wondering is that where, I mean, I'm sure, the, I'm sure that, you know, the boxer has the right to say, hey, look, I don't give a damn what you all say. I can do this. Which no, obviously, not, not, not he, well, 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 no. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, Nate, is this: you know, when they sign that contract, right? They sign that contract. They have to sign a contract, and I'm sure you have to sign one, or you have signed some, you know. But why would you sign a contract? Why would you sign a contract to get into the ring just to walk in? You don't got the fans' money and walk the hell out when you well, my- know you're not intending to fight. Let me read another part of the article. Let me say say this. Let me say this. The situation could have been resolved the same way it would have resolved had someone tried to fight above their division. Or in Mm -hmm. this case, someone got disqualified, let's say, for being three or four pounds overweight, couldn't make the weight. Okay? It's a technical thing. People understand that. All he had to do was raise that issue when it became apparent, saying, look, I've thought about it. There are some medical problems. What he's talking about is mm-hmm. the same thing probably that happened to Sugar Ray Leonard where he's got eye problems, retina. his eyeballs too long, mm-hmm. and he's likely to be subject to retinal detachment for uh, severe blows to the head. So he could have just sat there and done it the way it's done, which is you raise it as a physical infirmity, and you say, my boxing career is ended. This is not something I ought to be doing from now on. You see, that's right. just the way you deal with it. But he was a hack. He got hired as a hack because the fighter that he was fighting is up and coming, undefeated, and frankly, he mm-hmm. needs to be fed some more blood so he gets a craving for it. And he sharpened his skills so he can face somebody who is a legitimate opponent. That's why the guy was getting paid to get in the ring with him. He knew that circumstances were nothing that just came about out of the clear blue. They were known well in advance of the fight, and he could have posited them, and that would have been a legitimate excuse for calling off for medical reasons. But no. But my question for you, Judge Brown. Brown. Well, wait, Michael, before before we introduce the question, but I do have a question for Judge Brown. Once I, I mean, once you get done, but I have a question for Judge Brown based on that. Go ahead. Here's here's Uh, another article. There's so many conflicting stories out here. It says Rick Lacey, who has represented Harper in the past dealings, has been in touch with the Minnesota Office of Combative Sports on the fighter's behalf. Says that Curtis is a martyr on a protest, asked to explain. Glaser elaborates. What happened here was on August 12th, Curtis was given a contract to fight Ajaba for $6,000. He specifically asked the person who gave him the contract fight would be on TV, and he was told no. He signed the contract on August 13th and sent it back that day, and after that he was treated like garbage. He said he and his wife didn't know their plane ticket. They didn't get their plane tickets until August 22nd, the day of the fight. They flew into Minneapolis and waited at the airport for an hour and 45 minutes That's before a lie. they were picked That's up. A lie. Then they weighed in on Thursday. Curtis learned, contrary to what he'd been told um, before, his fight was going to be on TV, and he hadn't been given a countersigned contract, so he wanted more money. And then his wife says she's still shocked. Right, and she says she was shocked, and she didn't know what was going on. And Curtis says that he's upset, and he said, but he they never gave me a signed contract back, and told me there was no TV, and then it was a TV fight, and I kept asking for the contract, but they would never give it to me. I pretty much made up my mind in the dressing room that I wasn't going to fight, and then we touched gloves. I saw one of the people who hadn't done right by me in the corner, and I said, that's it. Oh, okay. Hell no. No. okay. Hold oh, on. Hold no. On. Hold on. Wait, wait, a minute. Wait, a minute. wait 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 a minute. I they bought my ticket the twenty second because they bought they bought my ticket. He told me 
he told me out of his mouth he had his ticket the next day. So somebody, somewhere, somebody lying. Curtis and Rick Glacier is a Rick Glacier. Let me tell you something. Me and Rick Glacier have. I had explained to Rick Glacier if he kept talking to me or saying anything about me that he was gonna have to. He was gonna have to straighten me when he saw me. And he think I'm threatening to punch him in the face, which I ain't because he ain't worth it. But I'll step to him like a man and make him straighten and straighten me. He was not there. They did not, they did not, um, he did not start representing Curtis Harbor till Sunday or Saturday when they got back because he said it on Facebook. Um, Rick Glacier's trying to make some money out of this. He don't know Curtis Harbor from a hole in the wall. I've been knowing Curtis Harbor since he was 13 years old. I've been knowing Curtis Harbor long than both Rick Glacier and his wife put together. Curtis Harper could have simply said they didn't tell me he was on TV. Nobody told me that until we was in the dressing room. I'm like, dude, what are we going to do now? You could have, here was the issue. Here's what I want you to understand. I brought this fight to Curtis Harper almost two months ago. The, um, Warriors called me about this fight. But instead of him allowing me to make the fight, he wanted him and his wife to do it. They got $2,000 less off the bat. I could have got him ten to $12,000. They took $6,000. When I went to pick up his per diem, the guy that matched the fight, um, Chico Rivas said, he took this fight for $6,000. I'm just here to work the corner. I'm here to help him. He said, Nate, this is the fight that I offered you about a month ago, a month and a half ago, $8,000 and, and for you to come back with a number, basically. I said, dude, he never called me back. Curtis Harper is trying what he's trying first of all he's being selfish he don't want to pay the people that work with him or come mm-hmm. out there and spend their time all this is about mm-hmm. him and his wife getting making all the money they think they can make when he and that's my question fight, though and that's my question Nate is that where okay he forfeited the fight is Curtis Harper still I mean cuz there's a purse right win or lose Okay, and and educate me because I'm not a boxer and I don't know actually how the boxing world <laughs> works when it comes to the money aspect. I know what you've been asked. Of it. So exactly, you know, did he still get paid just no, for showing up? No. Sir. Okay, so they so because he forfeit. Okay. No. I'm trying to explain to you. I'm trying to explain to you. Every state has gotten smart to that kind of stuff, and it's called an effort clause. If you don't put up effort, they can hold your purse. Okay, never heard that. Yeah. You you, you just can't come in there with making it a sham where you went in with right. the intent of pulling off some kind of uh, scam on everybody. If so had him, he went into the ring, had he went into the ring and fought one round and, and one just minute. fell out, he okay, he would have still got paid. Right, he would have got his money, right? right? Yeah, they okay. Pay, if he if he would right, he would have got paid. They had, they had a check. Mm-hmm. They had a check for dollars forty some hundred dollars, whatever it was, fifty some hundred dollars mm-hmm. for him for the purse, and another three hundred dollars, another three hundred dollars for his medicals. Okay. Because they paid for his medicals. Curtis Harper, I thought he, I, I didn't know the the New York Commission had said he should never fight again. I just knew they, they but New York is so 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 strenuous. On stuff that most states mm-hmm. will let you fight with stuff that New York won't let you fight with. So New York saying that his eyes messed up is just saying that if he goes to another state with a less strenuous eye exam, he's fine. You get what I'm saying? Right. So I wasn't knocking that so much because I'm thinking maybe he got the maybe especially after I saw the eye drops in his bag, maybe he got the um eye eye eye, eye stuff fixed, and you know I thought that. But when they told mm-hmm. me that he got bumped from California, the next day they said he got bumped from California on a on a fraudulent eye exam. I'm like, oh man, I'm glad he mm-hmm. didn't fight because he could have lost his vision. But the thing about it is, Curtis Harper came there knowing he wasn't gonna fight. He, Let me ask you one last question, said, and I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna ask you one last question, and, and I'm gonna shut up and sit in the background. You know, uh, when I was growing up. You know, boxing for me were the heavyweights. It weren't the lightweights and everything. As time w- w- went on, you started paying attention to the the middleweights and everything. You know, the heavyweights so were goes, Muhammad so Ali and all that. So you know, the heavyweight division is so goes boxing. 
Well, I'm saying when I was growing up as a kid, I knew about, you know, Frazier, Muhammad Ali, all those were heavyweights, right? Those were the, the ones that you saw on pay-per-view or you went to the movie theater and watched it and this, and this and the other. The heavyweight division is not as popular as certain other, you know, weight classes. Um, here's Dante Wilder uh, and, and, and others. Do you think, and I, I want to ask you that and also Judge Brown, do you think that the heavyweight D- division is going to ever have the the heyday that you know, for lack of a better term, that it had back in the the times of a uh, a Muhammad Ali and a and a Joe Frazier and and well, you gotta and, and George I got, Foreman. I got to help you understand something. You ready for this? You got to look at the era. That yeah. that is a, that is the golden era of the heavyweights. Never mm-hmm. once in the history of America did you have three gold medalists fighting vying for the same title. Ali won, won a gold medal at, 170, at 178 in 1960. Mm-hmm. Frazier won a gold medal at heavyweight in, six, in 64. And Frazier, Ali and Foreman won a uh, heavyweight gold medal in 68. You had three gold medalists in the same decade. And then, so you, right, had three, exactly. you had three great, three, three, three great fighters, and you had the greatest fighter, the, the, the pound for, well, not pound for pound, because Ray, Ray Roberts is pound for pound best fighter of all time. But you had the, the only real heavyweight in the history of boxing. Ali is the only true heavyweight. A lot of people don't get when I say that, but I'll explain if you want me to later. You've never had a guy, three guys that were that dynamic come out of the amateurs, and you never will. Because it's so – because, first of all, that was the era where you had, you had men that were fighting for something more than just self. They were fighting for mama, daddy, family, town. You get what I'm saying? It wasn't just about wow. the money they could make alone – it was about the people they could impact. You don't have that anymore because with this industry being the way that it is, so many guys are caught up in self. And 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 that 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 being said, do you think that these? I mean, you may have one guy that's great, but you'll never have that many guys that are great at the same time because you'll never have that many guys with that much love for you, that much love for a group over themselves. We're selfish people. Now. In the family, right? Right. I yeah. follow you. Hmm. So, Interesting. Curtis Hawkins, yeah, even if you get a great one, you got to have an opponent. Right. There you yeah. go. Somebody to push him. Because Frazier brought the best out of Ali. Frazier brought, right. brought the he best sure and the worst out of each other. And Foreman, mm-hmm. and Foreman, and Foreman brought the best. He brought the best and the worst out of those three guys. Brought the best and the worst out of each other. You had Ken. You sprinkle in Ken Norton. You sprinkle in Ernie Shavers. You sprinkle in mm-hmm. um. Cleveland Big Cat Williams, you sprinkle in, you know, guys like that. You sprinkle in um, Sonny Liston. You sprinkle those guys in, man. There were great mm-hmm. guys that came along before them that actually were the, that hung around and were able for them to pass the torch. You know what I'm saying? So my and thing the is, Corey no, brothers not. were, and, and, and you know what? And 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 the Corey brothers were the great White Hope, but those were some great batches, though. Yeah, yes, they were. <laughs> uh, Jerry Corey and Mike Corey were great fighters. As yeah. a matter of fact, Jerry Corey yeah. and Mike Corey got knocked out the same night. Um, um, mm-hmm. at light heavyweight, um, Mike Corey got knocked out by um, probably the greatest um, um, light light heavyweight of all time, Bob Foster, and Ali knocked out Jerry mm-hmm. Corey the same night, same call. Same wow. room. Both of them. Were, can you imagine that ride back to the family, to the family, family house? <laughs> <laughs> you did better than I did. No, you did okay. Too, well, let me say this. Let me say this, y'all. If I was out of shape, like Harper, I would have ran to the ring, and once I got in the ring, I would have ran around the ring and threw a punch every two minutes, or uh, every twenty seconds. Take all you that. know what I'm saying? I would have got myself in shape. By the, you, by, the time the fight the been over, by the time the fight would have been over, I would have been in shape by the 15th round. How many rounds was it, Nate? <laughs> it was a six-round fight, and everything that Curtis Harper is telling you and, and Rick Glacier is telling you and his wife are telling you is all a spin job. It's all a spin well, job. The, well, by the fourth round, after I would have been running, I would have been down to – uh, uh, the, the weight I need and muscles, and then I'd have knocked dude out in the fifth round. So he should have came in running. Well, let me right. you know what, bro? I'm going to tell you something. See, here, here, the, here is I'm the problem. Y'all, y'all got y'all to hear what I'm saying. Everything he, Curtis Harper's doing is trying to paint himself to be the victim. 
That is the problem with our, with our society now. Right. Everybody want to be the right. victim. Nobody want to take accountability for what they did. Good point. See, here, here's the thing. Boxing, especially heavyweight boxing, it's all about once you step in that ring, all what that other do? stuff goes flying out the window. It's like you gonna either deliver, or they're gonna deliver you out of the Poop ring. Get off the pot. on your back. You know, <laughs> so you know what we saw. Harper was running flim flam, and the sport's not flim flam. The sport is boxing. You see what I'm saying? I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna tell y'all just like Amen. this. I don't have to. Amen. I don't have yep. to yep. Amen. I have Amen. to with that brother, but I am, but I am currently trying to. I'm, 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 I'm talking to counsel about, dude. I, I, I really, I am really, I'm going after him. I'm going after him and his wife. They had, I, I feel like they had a, they had a plan to do this. I, and I keep telling people, I keep telling people. I said the lawyer that takes my case is gonna make the biggest name in the world for himself because no, no, if, if nothing else, all the promoters in the world are gonna love you. I'm all I have two, two, two attorneys I want you want to introduce you to, but I also want to let you know that your um, your position is getting a lot of play online uh, because I see it on a couple different um, uh, websites. Uh, it says here, trainer ripped into boxer Curtis Harper for bailing on televised fight. He cost me money. Trainer Nate Campbell reacts to his fight. His fighter, Curtis Harper, stunning decision to leave the ring just one second into his televised bout against Effie Ajave, Ajava. And then it says Ajave, on Friday yeah. night premiere, uh, boxing champions on SS1 card, journeyman heavyweight Curtis Harper made headlines by literally bailing on his fight with prospect Effie. I'm going to leave it there. I keep butchering his name. As he exited the ring. Ajagba. Ajagba. Um, after he exited the ring straight after the opening bell. Uh, Ajagba was credited with one-second win by disqualification. Harper later told reporter Jordan Hardy that he felt he was getting, wasn't getting getting paid enough and wanted respect. Harper has not said anything to media since this bizarre moment, and it's likely that he won't get paid and he'll be suspended by the Minnesota Commission. In the meantime, Harper's trainer, former World lightweight champion Nate Campbell has sounded off on Harper's behavior through his Facebook page. Among his numerous statements, Campbell accuses Harper of not being truthful with regards to his pay dispute claims. And there are a lot of explicit, explicit, explicit. They marked out a lot of things that you said. Uh, but it and says I mean every bit of Campbell it. then <laughs> then added that Harper's action cost him money, and he's obviously not getting paid from Friday's event and seems to indicate that Harper's been going after him for whatever reason. So you are getting a lot of um a, a lot lot of uh, attention as it relates to your position, so I just wanted to let you know that because I found it on you know what? I didn't different want sites. You know what? I really didn't want this. I want people to understand something. The only reason I'm talking to y'all if if he would have came to me and apologized and said, Man, I was wrong and I would never have spoken. I'd have kept my mouth shut. But my daughter said, "Daddy, remember loyalty." I said, "Loyalty went out the window when he stepped out that ring." And walk, he he left me sitting there in that corner by myself. Mm. He didn't have to call me. Look, there's a problem with loyalty. There's a problem. Loyalty goes both ways. Loyalty goes both ways. And if you're not loyal to me, the one dude that has given, I've given up. I've when people told me to not mess with him, I still did because. I was being loyal to him. But, dude, come on, man. What you did hey. was beyond forgiveness. Hey, I, so you Nate, can't forgive this. Not, hey, so, Nate, do they not put the, whether the uh, the bout is televised? <laughs> I, I know in the contract. No, they don't. I know. Okay, okay. Well, they don't. So, they didn't, but here's the thing. Curtis's wife, here's the thing. Curtis, and, again, I told you, Curtis did not, Curtis and his wife tried to negotiate this this fight, mm-hmm. I would have got him at least ten to tw- at least ten thousand, probably twelve thousand mm-hmm. dollars for this fight, or close okay. as I could have got him for it. But the thing about it is, you got a greenhorn trying to negotiate with the big boys. Mm-hmm. Right. That's like I'm gonna say this here. That's like going in front of Judge Joe 
Joe Brown by yourself and somebody got a paid attorney. No offense. More than likely, what's going to happen with that, Judge? <laughs> hey, we got to sing. <laughs> if an attorney represents himself, he's either got a fool, a fool for a client or a fool for a lawyer. There you go. Right. So there you go. Rather than, so, rather, rather, than, rather than say, Nate, as he has done before, Nate, this is how much I want. Call me and say, Nate, this is how much I want. I done went mm-hmm. and got it for him. And, and mm-hmm. here's the sad part about it. I've never stolen from this kid. I've never taken a dime mm-hmm. from him more than any time money came, I got money from him, he gave it to me. And it's never been much. Well, Nate, it sounds like he's acting out of character. So why do you think that out of nowhere he decided to do this? Do you think that it's the wife that's now playing? She wants more of a role in his career? I mean, it seems like what something else is going on she, behind the scenes. I'm going to say this up. I'm going to say this. What she needs to do is put down the roles and let somebody who know what they're doing help her husband. Can I ask a question real quick for, for, for would, Judge I would, Brown? I would have negotiated, hold on, wait a minute, hold on. I would have negotiated the mm-hmm. contract, made sure he got everything he needed, and he still gave me the same feed he gives me as a trainer. The same little funky $10,000, 10, uh, 10% rather. If it were $10,000, $1,000, or $300, it, whatever 10% would have been, that's what he would have gave me. I've never cheated this boy. And the sad part about it is, this the same dude that stole my that battery, you remember? Remember the guy took my car and drove off and I couldn't find it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do remember. That's yeah, Curtis. I do. That's him. Right. This is him. I remember you. I'm the guy that forgave Shit. him and took him back. I'm, I'm, but I'm the bad guy here. Can I ask a so question for Judge Brown? Well, Nate, let me ask, well, let me ask Nate a question because Nate talking. Nate, how did he look when you was trained? I mean, was he ready? Could he, could he, could he throw him? How you, how you train them, man? Let me tell you something. Because listen, it's easy to, to cast dispersion on his career because he's lost. <clears throat> That's how they keep you out of fight. Didn't they keep telling it was a sloppy fight with him and Chris Ariolo. He took the Chris Ariolo fight on ten days' notice. Came in, stood in there with the number four rated heavyweight on the planet at the time, and gave him all he wanted. You can say what you want about that kid, but he exhibited heart. And, and, and a, a fair amount of skill on such a short short notice. But the problem is this. After that fight, he went through a great depression. He had a damaged eye, couldn't fight. Mm-hmm. This kid went through, listen, he had some people investing in him that were still paying his bills even after the Areola fight. This clown went and sat down without me at a meeting and told all these rich people, I said, first of all, you're going to sit down with these white folk, and just like I said, you might want to be a little, take somebody with you who can keep you shutting up because you're going to say something stupid. If, as my mama says, if I'm lying, I grew wings and I'm flying. She told these people, I don't, I don't want to fight no more. <laughs> but, but, okay, okay. Later, so, so, so. Listen to me. Listen to me. And 30 ahead, days later, I'm sorry. she was sleeping on the streets. Mm. Mm-hmm. Can can I ask you, uh, uh, Valerie? Can I ask Judge Brown a question? I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay, sir. Okay, have you, uh, first. First, I have two questions. Um, have you ever represented any boxers? Okay, and what kind of uh, advice would you have given to this particular individual if they came to you and said, "This is what I plan to do," as you being their representative, as their lawyer? You well, follow what I'm saying? There are some rules that are in place to handle a situation like that. You might find out what they are and follow them. I have never represented a boxer. As I said, I know knew Muhammad Ali personally. A very good friend was his bodyguard for several years, personal bodyguard. I've had extended conversations with George Foreman, uh who, Lennox uh, Lewis, uh, not Lennox Lewis, uh, Hitman Hearns and uh, Tommy. Yeah, yeah, hell of a fighter, very educated man too, uh, self-educated and formally. And uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, we <laughs> he had some interesting conversations. Uh, I've known a number of fighters. I talked to hell. I even talked to his wife. And daughter that got into fighting 
and also Fraser's daughter who got into fighting. So I kept up with the sport, but there are some rules, and it might have helped if he had familiarized himself with the rules. If he had an eye problem, a retinal detachment problem that he was looking at, there was an out to that that he could have taken without all of that flim flam drama. As it was, it was just totally inexcusable. See, basically what he's saying in his defense now is, I never should have done it, so I should never fight again, which is understandable. Right. And, you know, his career was lackluster, but as I said earlier, he was supposed to be an appetizer for an up-and-coming potential champ. That's mm-hmm. basically what it was. He could right. break right. back into it. Uh, Lennox Lewis, uh, Len- uh, Lennox Lewis uh, did what he did after being out of shape. He got to training real hard. And he put up some good fights. You can come back. You know, all it takes is a good blow to give yourself and the fans confidence that you can put somebody <laughs> down and your career is remade. Right. You know, look at Ali. Can, I, can, I, say can I say something? Can I say something, guys? And, and, then, and then, and then, and then, and then, I just want to say this, and I want to thank Judge Joe Brown for for chiming in. You know, get out. I, I understand <laughs> what he's saying is that we're. But the whole thing, because Valerie shared me that video, I'm looking at like I've never seen this shit before. I've never seen a boxer walk into a ring and then walk out the ring and walk all the way down a damn. You know what I'm saying? You, you, if you guys haven't seen it, you have to look at it. That was well, you I will, know, I will unbelievable. Play it, play it again before before we leave. Um, Nate, hey, were, Nate, were you were you saying something? I was going to yeah. say something. People fail to realize something. Two of my favorite fighters in the history of boxing that I watched growing up, and I'm friends with both of them, were Freddie, um, um, Fearless Freddie um, Pendleton, and um, Emmanuel Augustus. Anybody on here familiar with them? I know, uh, I know Emmanuel Augustus. Yeah, great, great, great fucking. Great he has great a losing boxing. record. Has a, has a, yeah, got shot in the head. Um, some years back, mm-hmm. trying to break up break up a fight, and somebody said, "What do you right. think about Emmanuel being shot?" When they called me, I said, "If anybody can win, come come back from this, it's gonna be Emmanuel. He's living today, mm-hmm. and he's training people." Freddie Pendleton, I think, was twenty six and twenty six when he won the world title. Some some crazy messed up record like that. People get the, these records mixed up. I'm trying to help y'all put this in perspective. I believe I believe that Curtis Harper before he pulled his son, could still do it if he gave it his all. But he's such a head case. And now he has somebody. I believe his wife, his wife, is, is the worst thing that ever happened to him. Because she's, a, she's, a, um, an, she's an enabler. She is an enabler. And the worst thing a fighter can ever have, you know, first thing a fighter can ever have enabler. is an enabler. Right. Right. And that, that's, an not only, that's, and not, that's not only that's not only for just sports either because I, I I remember taking that position there was a certain rapper who I told him I could only take him so far and then you have to you have to let go you got to love them that much that you will allow someone who is an expert in that field to take career into their hands so that they can become whatever it is that you know is is a, I, I'll put a god well, well, well it. you know, because it's, I'm very it's spiritual funny as it relates what to said. the reason why we are here and how far that you can go. But, but I want to uh, right now, Michael. Give me just a second. I'm gonna, we're almost um at the end of the show. I'm gonna pay a few bills, and when we come back, I'm gonna go around the board and get everybody's um final words, statements, suggestions, comments. You guys want to address either Joshua Brown or Nate Campbell. Um, that'll be awesome. And uh. I am. I apologize to people. I see a lot of people just raise them, raise their hand, and I can't get to you. I need to go back around the board and grab these people and get their contact information. And guys, have a happy and safe Labor Day. In case I forget to say that, uh, right now, like I said, guys, if you got any background noise, I hear a little bit. Please put yourself on mute so I won't have to. We're gonna pay some bills and then I will uh, 
see you on the other side of the break. I don't know who that is. But, yeah, please help me out um, by fixing that before we get back. Thank you. Are you ready to make money? Lincoln Heritage Life Insurance Company is seeking agents in Indiana, Florida, Ohio, and Virginia. Contact Ebony Fire at 216-224-5311 for details. Everyone's nervous on a first date, but with my situation, it's even scarier. I want to be open and honest, but some things are almost impossible to talk about. Then I discovered StartToDate.com. With StartToDate.com, I found a partner that I can tell anything to and not be afraid or feel like I'm hiding things. I never dreamed I could be this happy. Stop worrying and start dating with StartToDate.com, where relationships begin with honesty and trust. Download the app at StartToDate.com. Are you a dope goal getter like a stylist, model, beauty expert, or independent artist doing your thing? If so, Fashion Life and Tea is looking for you. All you have to do is email us at info at fashionlifeandtea.com for a chance to be on our podcast. To learn more about who we are and what we do, you can check out our blog at fashionlifeandtea.com. Fanatics, you are now tuned in to the baddest. Sire Jukebox, the original ghetto boy, and the enforcer, DJ Ready Red, still making trouble. While you're listening to the celebrity consultant, Valerie Denise Jones. back you're listening to the judge joe brown show and of course i played that clip because we recently lost one of my good friends my buddy my pal dj ready red of the ghetto boys i wanted to pay tribute to him of course because uh here soon they're going to be making funeral final funeral arrangements and then i will of course introduce that on uh upcoming show. And another person I want to pay tribute to is Miss Aretha Franklin. Bill Clinton spoke at her funeral and he I love what he said. He said that he was not there as a president but as a groupie. Oh my gosh, this woman was phenomenal and I really, really enjoyed the speech that the former president delivered at Miss Aretha Franklin's funeral, aka Aretha Franklin the Queen of Soul. All right, so we're back, and uh, what I'm going to do, as promised, I'm going to go around the room. We are down to our last 20 minutes, um, and I want to start with uh, with uh, Judge Brown, um, and then I'm going to go to you, Nate, to make sure that you get your point across, whatever it is that you want to be heard and whatever it is that you want to say to this guy, because I really feel like this is an injustice, that, um, yeah, he, he ripped you off and that he betrayed you, and I hate it when things go sour and people should be loving on each other as opposed to the latter. Um, and, and I don't know why other things take precedence. I don't understand why money is a priority or when other parties are involved, they become a priority and it sours other relationships. But anyway, that's just me always in my feelings because I'm all about love and, you know, getting along with everybody. So Joshua Brown, um, in honor of the, the fact that this is your show, um, do you have any final words or anything that you want to say? Oh, yeah. First off, you can find me on Twitter at Judge Joe Brown TV. It does not have a blue check. But I'm relying on whatever I say carrying the day rather than that blue check. But this, again, is part of a new trend. It's got to do with taking masculinity out of society. There's certain ways men are supposed to do things. In other words, straight up. You know, you're not supposed to do things in what they call a chicken shit fashion. Excuse me. That's basically what it is. If he had a medical problem, there was a way to have handled that. You've got an enabling wife. You know, they say... 
Uh, behind a good man is a good woman. Sometimes one of the worst things a man can have is a bad woman. Mm. And there's too much of this stuff going on in society where you start playing an angle that isn't right for what you're doing. The sport's been good to him. He's had his chance with it. And it's not fair nor appropriate nor is it manly for him to start trying to play this game CNN at all are trying to play with it being a blood sport, trying to take it out. There needs to be something that still keeps primal manhood out there raw and unadulterated for the public to look at. It's a thing we need. So everybody else has been very erudite about what they've said about it. So I feel like I'm in good company. I'll pass the baton. Somebody else I'm sure has got more to say. Yeah, Nate, I would like to for him to pass the baton to you because I want to make sure that you get your point across. And I'd like to give you, you know, um, yeah, you got like five or so minutes um, to, to share okay. what it is that you want first to say all, to this person and also address your Facebook audience. First of all, um, anybody who knows me knows they can reach me at, um, um, at Nate Campbell. My page is Nate Campbell. There's a, page, there's a, a moving video of me knocking out a guy. In the ring, and there's also Nate Nat Turner Campbell. That page I'm on every day. You can hit me up on Experience the Galaxy at Nate Campbell. Um, on internet on my on my internet, and Galaxy is spelled with two X's. You can watch me on Saturdays at Experience the Galaxy with Nate Campbell on LDLTV um, dot com on YouTube, um, or hit me up on Facebook Live Experience the Galaxy. Um, first of all. I've, you, you know that sometimes you meet a person, you, you watch a person on TV, and you're like, I, I, I know I'm going to like him. If I ever meet him, if I ever in a room with him, I'm, I'm going to like him. That is the most true statement I've ever made about Judge Joe Brown. <laughs> he has been the realest guy ever. He said the stuff that I say on a regular basis. Curtis Harper has an enabling wife that would like to make him believe that somebody owes him something. He also has had people around him that are trying to use him to poke a stick at boxing and hurt a sport that has saved more lives than it has ever taken. If it wasn't for boxing, I'd be in prison right now probably. If it wasn't for boxing, I would get to change my family's name. The night that I won the world title, I can truly say that was the day that everybody in my life that last name was Campbell was no longer remembered as drug dealers, murderers, robbers, thieves, and so on. When you say Nate Campbell or Campbell in Jacksonville, they say, you mean the guy that won the world title? It took me a whole – I built the back of this city. I built boxing up on my own back in this city. I've represented Jacksonville as best I could every time I went out. I would never do anything to defame the name of this city, even though this city hasn't always been the best or the nicest to me. As a foster child growing up in, in and out of foster care, with a mother on drugs and a father that died, I refuse to allow someone like Curtis Harper or anyone to come and destroy what we as fighters in Florida have done for our prospective city. When you got guys that I, I fought in the golden era of boxing, Winky Wright, Jeff Lacey, um, me and Jeff were roommates in Amherst, Roy Jones, Glenn Johnson, Tony Tarver, David Santos, um, um, Randall Bailey, Vince Phillips, um, Smoke Gaynor, Jeff Lacey again, um, Keith um, – Keith, um, Keith and um, Andre Berto, all guys that are still fighting currently to some extent. Please know that what this young man did is not indicative of what we are or who we are as fighters. And if this is allowed to stand, boxing will pay a very, very big price. If fighters are allowed to do what Curtis Harper did, boxing will not be able to stand. It will not survive. This is, this is a this is a danger and a threat to boxing. Not just to me, but to boxing. I just happen to be the one that's embarrassed. He didn't have to call me. He didn't have to ask me to go with him. And his wife asked me to go with him before he did. He didn't have to come to the gym and sit down and have a discussion with me about working his corner. The problem is nobody wants to be accountable. Nobody wants to do what men are supposed to do. Everybody wants to blame somebody else for their actions. That's why we're losing. That's why manhood... Alpha male, being an alpha male is outlawed, especially for black men. He's married to a woman. 
she and, and she loves to call me a misogynist and a racist because she that's what she said. You you two black guys are be two big black men are yelling at a black at a white woman. I had to make her understand something. This ain't about you right now. This is about this young man trying to get to the ring. But what I realized after having that conversation with her and looking back at it, neither one of them were going to ever allow him to be hit or throw a punch in that ring because they had other plans. There is no way that this should stand. There is no way that this can stand and box and survive it. I just want people to understand this one very important thing. You sign a contract with the good faith to carry out that contract. And if you don't like the way the contract is structured and you're, if the people around you didn't do the job they were supposed to do, he could have addressed that the night he got there. He knew what the contract said when he got there because he signed it. He knew what the contract was all about because he signed it. When he found out the fight was on TV, he could have said something to the promoter right then. He could have said something to me. Everything he's saying is a, is a lie about his money being cut. It's not about being cut. He just didn't have the right person negotiated. Thank you very much. So I want to ask you real quick, because you know I can't just let you go fly by that. You think it's different because she's a white, white woman, you know? No. Over this problem. black she man's career? Maybe she, she just doesn't get it. She, she, no, she feels entitled. There's an entitlement this young lady has. She has, a, she has an entitlement that, 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 only, that only lives in white people. Black folk don't have that same entitlement. We don't have it. Well, that, that's my point. Do you think she doesn't get it because she doesn't understand us, right? She don't, I think we're saying understand. the same thing. It's not that she doesn't. She can't understand it. She like like that Kanye she, that West and, 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 and Kim Kardashian. Oh, I can't Kim, yes, I'll, yes. I'll get I'll get, yeah. I'll get Judge Brown riled up. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, certain you races don't I, get on the races. I to say about this. <laughs> certain women you gotta, you cannot know what? I support say this, Valerie. certain men Valerie, in power because they don't understand that melanin. Here's the problem. I don't, and I said this before, and I'll say it again. Somebody got to give up who they are to be in an interracial relationship. Would you agree, to Judge Brown? Coach, uh, Judge Brown. <laughs> so weird. Uh, somebody got to give up. Word is amen. Somebody got to give up. Somebody got to give up who they are. <laughs> I, I got to like <laughs> Hey, somebody got to give it. I, I say it all the time. One of us got to give up who we are. Either white man going to try to be more black or a black, 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 black woman black. or vice versa. However it is, somebody got to give up something. And what well, you know what her up? problem is, if I can interject this just very briefly, she's anti-masculine. She's part of that she feminist is. trend where they're she trying is. to she tone down masculinity. Now. They call it toxic masculinity, but guess what? That kind of masculinity is what actually keeps the world safe and peaceful. When you cut down on masculinity, you cut down on standards, you cut down on mannerability, ethics, morality, peacefulness, and also the heroic they don't like. I'm going to say this here. I'm going to say this, Valerie. Every every place where masculinity was outlawed or softened ended. Every every place in the world that has ever had masculinity and masculinity was allowed to be challenged and become soft, Egypt, Rome, Greece, all of them in ruins. Only you only talk about what they once were, right or wrong. Right. Amen. Right. And I'ma say that I'ma say it just like I mean it. She is one of those she is one of those Feminist LBGT supporters, and she could not deal with my masculinity. And I was glad. I, and, I, and the more she couldn't deal with it, the more I rubbed it in her face. I'm a man. You wouldn't understand this because you can't. I said it about 50 times at dinner that night. I'm a man. You still, and I, I went so far as to say, I'm a black man. You definitely can't get it. See, the problem right. is. She wanted me True. to count out to her, and I was not about to. Get, first of all, honey, if, if anything in this world, I need to make this make this be known to you. I'm a loaded mm. round every day, all day. I'm a loaded round because no other race of man wakes up with the same understanding about life as black men. The average black man wakes up every morning with this one thing on his mind. If you don't wake up wondering, um, 
wondering what I'm gonna eat for lunch. She don't want. He don't wake up wondering, wondering about if the car gonna start. None of us worry about that. You know, what we worry about Valerie. Yeah. If we gonna make it home. Right. Right. So you you, right. you definitely That's can't good. understand. You definitely can't understand me. Now I'm not not you marry who you marry. Because I have friends with white wives who I love. John David Jackson's wife, Kathy, I call her the gold standard of women. I said if I was going to ever marry a woman that wasn't, that was, that was white, she better be like Kathy because Kathy set such a high standard. Valerie, <laughs> <laughs> right. you want I, me to go ahead and slam in? But you, but wait, a yeah. minute, wait a minute. But you, and I'm not knocking you, knocking nobody for doing that. But I'm saying that's just my opinion of, of the, the women that I've met that are white that marry black men because most of them emasculate them in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And she emasculates them through, and I couldn't deal with that. And she couldn't deal with me. Right. Right. Um, Michael, I, I was about to go to you, Seth, because he's been quiet. Um, and then I'll, I'll come to you and then CeeLo and then down the board. Uh, again, I apologize to everybody who recently pressed the number one. We are out of time. We are down to our last ten minutes. And I hope you enjoyed today's show and that you will return next Friday, 4 p.m., 929-477-1167 is the number to lock in your phone. Also, if you decide to listen to this via the archives, please make sure that you subscribe. Uh, Yusef, you've been quiet this entire time. Do you have any final words or comments? And also, can you share your yeah, contact I, information with us? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, I'm Yusef, and uh, I'm on J. King Network. Uh, Monday through Friday uh, from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time uh, as use of Kente. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I agree with what jo- Judge Joe Brown is talking about as well as uh, the brother, you know, he should, you know, I saw it from the beginning of him as being in cahoots with his wife. You know, it, it was just something about the antics that he was putting on. Like they said, this is going to be the signal or something to let you know I'm going to go through with it, you know. And, you know, it's just, it's, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. You know, I don't get why would you do that and what he's really after. You know, I don't, you know, I, it's, it's crazy. It, it was funny to me. You know, he just didn't want to fight the dude. That's how as soon as he took his shirt off. You know, the dude didn't want to fight him. He knew he wasn't in shape, like Ali said, you know, and and that's what it sums up to me. But uh, I enjoyed the show. One love. Thank you. And since you mentioned Ali, Ali, why don't you come on in and give us your contact information yeah. and any final comments? I'll yeah, well, short one, Bobby. Well, well first of all, I just want to say, uh, if uh, you ain't going to fight, don't even act like it. You know what I'm saying? Don't even try to play with the game. You know what I'm saying? At all. Don't even come to the gym if you ain't ready to fight in boxing because that's a serious, serious sport. I thought it was a joke when I was a little kid trying to get in the ring because I saw a ring and put on some gloves and got knocked out real quick. You understand? You got to have skill. And if Nate Campbell come up here and show you some skill to try to help you, man, don't be playing with the game, man. You know what the contract said, but let alone the contract, where's your morals at? Because that's what these people is lacking, morals. And y'all show better get them. Anyway, you can uh, reach me at Ali 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 on Facebook and God Rap Man on Twitter. I want to say much love, and, and I'm a Miss DJ Ready Red. Much respect to... Uh, Judge Joe Brown, and much respect to Nate Campbell, and I love you, Valerie. You know, and the great, the great, I see you in the back. Much love, man. <laughs> Thank you. Since I'd you like mentioned the great. Thirty I'd like to take about fifteen, twenty seconds to point something. I got to talking about masculinity, even though. that LGBTQ thing, and Mm -hmm. I just said the signs are all there because they're written loud and neon, and and that's what I saw. So it's it's something obvious that people are missing these days that they need to get once again. We need to put that back into the equation so we get some standards. See, I've got a particular love of. I was kind of nerdy and. 
I was growing up in a bad neighborhood, but my old man said, look, I'm teaching you how to box. He used to box when he was in the Army. And he showed me how to do it, and it made my life a whole lot different ever since elementary school. You know, it was always, okay, let's throw it out. And then I got martial arts. I've been taking that for 50-some years. But, you know, boxing is a thing that will help you be a man so you can deal with that, what do they call it, the manly art of self-defense and see there is something sacred about that. And for this clown to jump himself out there and embarrass it like that is just intolerable. Right. Anyway. Right. I, and, hey, you know what? I I, lo- I love the way you say Judge. Let me tell you something. I'll say this to anybody. And, Valerie, I want you all to hear this. And I'm not bragging. If you walk up to anybody who came up, came along and boxing with me, they call me a legend. I will box. And I ain't talking about just in the ring that you saw. I will walk into a gym and knock a heavyweight clean out, 126, 130 pounds. And and stand over their body twitching and say, what? Who next? Because what I believed was I was as good as any man in the land because my daddy told me I was. My mama told right. me I was. And the problem is these guys don't have that kind of self-confidence anymore. They call it arrogance now. When I was coming up, they called it being a man. They call, oh, they called it being a dog, D-A-W-G. I was a dog. As a matter of fact, the young man that was commentating the fight, one of the twins, Jamal, um, Jamal Charlo, he said, "Him and his, he said, me and my brother grew up wanting to be you. We wrote, call, we wrote, we wrote um, book reports about you." So my daddy came home from prison, and he said, "This is the fighter you need to watch," and it was me. And I never knew how my life, what I did, impacted somebody until I came along, and I realized all these kids that are coming up now behind me, some of them are world champions, and some of them ranked rank, rank number one, two in the world. Some of them said, "Man, I remember you came to my gym and told me I could be world champion." And I'm like, wow, that meant something. You said, man, it meant the world to me. That's why I'm here. So can you imagine what some kid who might have looked at Curtis Harper as a role model going to end up? Think about it. Mm, right. Wow, that's powerful. Definitely powerful. Speaking of powerful, um, someone I, I mentioned a, a portion of this show of paying tribute to the late DJ Ready Red. He called someone on this phone, the great. So we're going to go in and bring him in and let him give his final words as well as his contact information. Yes, I, I, I will word. give you the. You're going to have the last I'm word, sorry. yes, sir. Yeah, I'm going to make you. you you're, you're after Philo, and then we're going to we're going to wrap and and bid everybody adieu and, and wish them well this weekend. Please be safe this Labor Day weekend. Also, my birthday weekend. So, guys, make sure that you tune in for uh, birthday show you. Monday and Tuesday. But uh, we'll we'll talk about that another time. Another Happy conversation. birthday. Thank you, Judge Brown. Next Wednesday, though, it's, it's September 5th. Okay. We'll, we'll get to that. Of course, I'm going to hit y'all up in, in your inbox because we're going to do birthday shows. Uh, but, uh, Philo, come on in, and uh, and thank you for the birthday shout-out. Um, Philo, come on in and give us your contact information and, and final words. Well, you know, I can be reached at Philo the Great on everything, T-H like phone, E-L-O-T-H-E-G-R-E-A-T. But uh, Judge Joe Brown said something earlier in the show, man, that's like when he was talking about masculinity, man, he was like some of these dudes out here with uh, pink drawers on. And, uh, you know, I I can attest to that. And, Nate, this is what I want you to do for me. Uh, You going after your money at the dude, but make sure you sue his ass for walking to the ring with some purple motherfucking trunks on (laughs) and some (laughs) And and, and and the pink trim and and, and, and and the pink trim around him. He had the yes, pink indeed. trim on and, and the purple. You know what I'm saying? Then he walked off. My thing is this: if you're gonna put on those type colors, then you don't pull a cowardice act. And they, I want you to sue him because, like you said, he knew he was gonna do that. They knew they was gonna do that before he even when he was on the plane when he showed the. Because you don't pick those trunks like that unless you're going to make a statement and beat the brakes off somebody. You just don't do that. You know what I'm saying? That that ain't that ain't man. That ain't masculine. So man, you make sure you go after buddy, man. You make sure you get what's owed to you, bro. Um, because it is a slap in the face. Uh, I believe I heard you say that 
anytime you fought, anytime you did anything, you made sure you carried the honor not only of yourself, but the city of Jacksonville, where you from, bro. And you made sure that, you know what I'm saying, you have held your integrity and your dignity for the people who believe in you. And for you to believe in Buddy like you did, man, like you said, you've been knowing Buddy since he was 13. And uh, for you to stick your neck out on the line like that, man, and folks walk out and Buddy walk out like that, bro. Um, Man, do everything you got to do, bro, to uh, get what's yours, bro, because that was some BS, for real. Uh, well, don't see low to Drake. Good luck. God bless. Go. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Michael, you got uh, our last two minutes. Well, I want to say I've really enjoyed this conversation. I really have. Judge Joe mm-hmm. Brown, all you guys, I mean, really great. I'm trying to be, you know, uh, uh, not get emotional, but last night I lost my oldest brother. I want yeah, to share something with you. I was about to ask you to my pay condolence. tribute. My condolences. Yeah. Okay, so the thing is that my I come from a family of six. I come from a family of six. The oldest is a female, which is my oldest sister four boys in between, and then the youngest is a girl. I lost my two youngest brothers years ago. My oldest brother was the only one. He died at the age of 10 years older than me at 66. And what I'm trying to share to you guys is this is that where, you know, when I knew he was ill, I shared, and I see what folks share about, and, and they say, I'll pray for them to get better. I'll pray for them that God can heal everything. But I realized last night, and my brother served in the military. He was in the Navy. He was drafted. He didn't choose. He was drafted to go into the military back in the 70s. And thank God he came home. And um, what I'm going to share with you guys is this is that where last night, and he chose to be cremated. Last night, I went to his resident, and there were three officers in full uniform giving his due respect. They had a flag there. They had the, 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 the pennant there. They, they, they rolled his body out and opened up the floor that covered him. They did that in front of us, in front of my family. And all I'm trying to say is this is that where, you know, he's a Vietnam veteran, and I appreciated that. I love that. But the thing is that where you got to really contact your family, be in touch with them. Um, for the people who said God can do sometimes a cure is to take you away from this earth. And, and and take you out of your pain within your body. Sometimes that's the cure. Sometimes it's not making you live longer, take you off this earth and hold you in his arms. We cannot understand that at times because we missed our loved ones. But you got to remember, for the Bible said, for you shall surely die. And think about that. Your body, your flesh will leave this earth, but your spirit and your soul will live forever in his kingdom. If you have lived in the way that he hoped that you have, that's all I can say. God bless you guys, and I love you. And, Michael, our prayers are with you. Our prayers are also with BLW, who is also in the hospital. Thank you, Ali, Daryl, Philo, uh, Nate, Judge Brown, Yusef, and everybody else who joined us today. I love you. Have a great weekend. Please be safe. And we'll see you next Friday, 4 p.m. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night. Let me bid you good night.